I'm a K-I-N-G Baby, I'm all you need In the off-white Rari Baby, we run the streets I'm a K-I-N-G Westside royalty I'm a K-I-N-G Baby, that's all you need I'm a K-I-N-G Baby, I'm all you Alright everybody, welcome back. I'm your host Steven Basita on my podcast Get It at the Social Nostra Network and make sure that you please like, subscribe, comment if you're watching us here on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and please just make sure that you're following us and engaging with us. We love all the comments and conversations as well as my personal Instagram which I really enjoy all the feedback that I get from that as well. And today my guest is the second half of the Bleacher Blums, David Tuttle. How you doing, my man? I'm doing great, Stephen. Thanks for having me on. Uh, the Social Noster Network's been uh, been fantastic, um, and so I would encourage everybody to get on there, listen, subscribe, rate, and view. And, and as Blummer and I say on our podcast quite a bit, um, we don't care if it's a dissenting point of view. We don't care if it's a contradictory point of view. We don't even care if it needles us a little bit. Anything to start the dialogue and uh, give us something, you know, some actionable item to think about or discuss is uh, is valuable to us. For sure. And especially in today's time, I feel like everybody's got an opinion on things and I just like to engage in discussion, which is fun. But I also like to engage in like, you know, factual conversations. Sometimes people get really riled up about stuff. I was actually yeah. talking to Blum about this, the whole analogy of like people thinking that the best college team could always beat the worst college team in a sport. And so, you know, we were yeah. talking about football momentarily. I was like, it doesn't matter what the sport is. It could be basketball. It could be football. It could be baseball. It could be hockey. I don't care. It's never going to happen. If it's a football game, the college team is going to have a lot of guys leaving in ambulances. If it's a basketball game, the, you know, it's going to be one of those amazingly lopsided games. You know, if it's baseball, it doesn't matter. And people keep forgetting or they don't know. Like, from varsity sports, you have less than a 1.5% chance of being a high school varsity athlete and playing a college sport. And that's the JC level through the D1 level. You have less than a 0.01% chance of playing a professional sport from being a college athlete. So they're literally, you're taking, for the NBA, for instance, they're taking the 60 best players in the world and they get to go into the NBA in the first draft picks or the only ones guaranteed a contract. If you're in the yep. second round, you're not guaranteed anything. They could cut you right after. So I don't think people understand that perspective. Man, it's like th th there's 60 guys in the whole world that go into the draft and only the top 30 are guaranteed anything. Yep. It's crazy and, and I think to your point, there really are no guarantees in life anyway. I, I listened to a TED talk maybe uh, three or four months ago. It's a really fascinating comparison of athletes of yore versus athletes of today. And they talked about Jesse Owens running on a dirt track where he would have to dig his shoes into the dirt to create those um, little starting blocks. And now guys carry their own starting blocks out there. It's a really fascinating um, TED talk. And I'll try and look at it and, and send you the link. But the, uh, the other piece of that was it said something – to the effect of if you know a person who's seven feet tall um, between the ages of 21 and 31 years old, there's a 28% chance or something like that, that they play in the NBA. I mean, wow. like we're, yeah. So that's not necessarily ability that's height, but that's height and ability. But the bottom line is this is a small, small sample size. Like there aren't that many people in the world that are seven feet tall. And if they're in that age group, 28% of them are playing in the NBA. Right. I mean, that's, that's a fascinating number. And I think it relates to your point, which is we're talking about the tip of the sphere and um, it's great fodder for discussion. We talk about it on the Bleacher Blums podcast all the time. And it sounds like when you had Jeff on, you guys touched on that. I forget because I played sports such a long time ago and it was such an integral part of my life. That, and I was good at it. And so I had these advantages that maybe I didn't realize how special it was at the time. And I think, I just think it is fun to discuss, but you definitely have, you know, for lack of diminishing what people say, you have the general population and then you have the people in the know. And right. I think we see this in politics and sports and everywhere else. And, right. and there is the fact that if you're anonymous, you're allowed to say things and not really have any repercussions. And so back to my original point, Please engage. Please talk. It's great. 
um, it's great fodder for discussion, but you know, it's nice when people take the, uh, take the mask off and are able to kind of bear their soul and say, Hey, look, this is why I feel this way. Um, this is, you know, these are some statistics I have to back that up. Yeah. Um, and then one last thing, Steve, is that I thought it was hilarious um, because I do like to have discussions and a lot of times they're hypothetical or they're discussions around the fact that, um, you know, oh yeah, I remember that 1975 All-Star game when Pete Rose bowled over, you know, the catcher for the Mets, Ray Fossey and, or Roy Fossey or whatever his name was and all the stuff. And then, you know, you're having a conversation with someone and they get on their phone and they're like, oh no, I'm sorry, that was the 1976 All-Star game. And you're like, you know, I... So sometimes there's the tenor of facts and then there's a tenor of like, what are you trying to say with the conversation? I think that's what right. touched, you know, kind of what you started with. Yeah. So, you know, I, uh, I love getting to dive into each person's little journey into how they kind of got to where they are with this. And I've done that with Lauren and Neil and um, I had Neil on my show and I had Lauren on my show and then they both, you know, hopped in they're part of this and, um, I got to be on Kevin's. And so, you know, we're all kind of bounced around. And like I said, I had your other half on. So how did, but you know, he never told me, how did you guys connect? And how did you guys think to even do this? Like, how did you two even meet and, and get the yep. whole, because you guys had actually started your podcast before joining this network. We did. And um, I, that sounds like it's a pretty unique thing. And I appreciate you asking. I, I actually thought you were going to ask me that question to see if it compared with Blum's <laughs> because uh, when my wife tells the story of how we met and got married, it's a lot different than the story that I tell. So right. if you did, if you did ask Blummer and you're, uh, you're, you're sneaking up on me, here we go. So, um, so it's really funny. So I'm a little bit older than Jeff and uh, he played at Cal Berkeley and I played baseball at Santa Clara and our paths never really crossed, which is so funny because baseball, as you already mentioned, is a really small fraternity. And, um, you know, I played Dave Roberts was one of my roommates in, uh, in a ball and Aaron Boone was a roommate of mine at some point along the way. And now they're all managers. That'll tell you how old I am. But, uh, but you know, so these guys and Jeff knows some of those guys. So Blummer crossed paths and he was a teammate of this guy who was a teammate of this guy. So our, you know, our, we were kind of living, I don't know if existential is the right word, but like mirrored lives, um, even though I'm a little bit older, but we never really crossed paths. Like I never pitched against him and we never played on teams against each other. And then, um, many years after I retired and he was just finishing up his career, our kids were actually going to school together here in Orange County. Um, he was living in San Clemente and we're living down here where we live this, I call it East Mission Viejo, but you know, uh, North San Diego County. So, uh, Anyway, so our kids were at school together and I kept seeing this guy and really, um, you know, maybe this is a sexist comment, not so much at that school, but most of the drop offs were women in the morning, like, hey, mom's dropping off. And here are these two tall dudes like, you know, passing each other every single day. And, you know, I've got three kids. He's got, you know, four kids, I guess. Um, but, you know, this gaggle of kids coming in and I have a gaggle of kids going over there. And somehow we just I said, you know, you look familiar. Um, might I know you and you know that kind of conversation so we started oh you played oh, I played baseball too like one of those things yeah. and we were in the parking lot and it was kind of when podcasting was becoming I don't know about bigger but we just had a ton to talk about and you know we we felt like he was just finishing up his career and I had finished my career about five years before we felt like there was um not just a market but we really enjoyed the conversations and our podcast wasn't going to be as baseball heavy when we initially talked about it. we said hey look um here's two dads that played professional baseball that um have great conversations about how that shaped our lives and shaped how we're parenting our children and shaped a lot of things about um either how competitive we are how we interact with the world and we would spend 20 minutes or uh you know 30 minutes out in the parking lot after drop off and uh, just kind of shoot the breeze and figure out like, hey, you know, we do have a lot in common and we should get together and we should think about a, um, a medium or an avenue to kind of talk about this stuff. And, um, and so the podcast was kind of born. I think um, Blummer's initial name didn't hit home, but it was like talking to Tuttle in the parking lot, you know, or something like that. We were joking because that's what every day was. It was like, hey, we're just up. My wife, I'd get home like a half hour after drop off. She's like, where were you? I'm like, ah. I was just talking to Blummer in the parking lot. So he'd go home and go, yeah, I was talking to Tuttle in the parking lot. And so Funny. we actually were thinking about calling the podcast, the parking lot. And then, uh, you know, it's taken on a few different shapes and iterations. And we had tried a podcast with another guy at one point, just to kind of be more um, parenting heavy and less sports heavy. 
and um and it didn't go that well and uh and you know persistence is kind of one of the themes throughout right. being a professional athlete anyway right so persistence and grinding it out and we uh we kind of arrived at where we are now and hopefully continuing to improve upon that and make some you know some positive changes and grab some audience members along the way well i really do love listening to your guys' podcast and i've uh you know, I've called Kevin a few times. And for those who don't know, Kevin's the one that's orchestrating the executive producer for all of our stuff. So um, I was on Kevin's podcast and I've done a couple of talks with Kevin. I've been trying to get him on the mind about being a girl dad. And of course his daughters are, you know, college and post-college were minor, you know, yeah. preschool and, and infant status, you know, so. Well, you should just have him on just to steal secrets, you know, and, and then right. if, if he did something that you disagree with, then at least that's something you can learn, you know, learn from. And then oh, exactly. if he did some things that you appreciate, like, hey, thanks, Kevin. Thanks oh, we're, gonna, we're actually going to do that talk later because, yeah, I wanted to because, you know, do the, the gap thing, you know, but um, one of the one of the really cool things, though, and I really enjoyed on your guys' podcast is, you know, the hey, you guys have had people who've commented and like, you know, sent in stuff and you guys have talked about it, which is always fun to hear, you know, some, from somebody writing in on something and then your guys is, you know, back and forth on it. But just, you know, you, you guys, you can tell you have kind of that, that unique relationship where you guys are ex professional baseball players and you can kind of like come together and just have some of these conversations and you know some of the same people and stuff and that's that's really hard it's hard to have that and honestly like in all my years of sports so I didn't play professional basketball I went to school in, on a college scholarship for basketball um, I was a walk-on and got a scholarship and basketball is what I wanted to do I ended up fighting and um, doing MMA fighting uh, amateur as well as boxing amateur and I enjoyed both uh had a great time, was undefeated in my weight class, and that was exciting. I know not to mess with you now. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't meet lots of people. You know, one of my best friends I played, right? I mean, one of my best friends here, but three or four of my best friends, period, all I, I played college basketball with, but we all live in different places. I'm here in Southern California. One of my buddies lives in Texas. One lives back where I'm from in Washington. Eric, who's one of my best friends, lives here in um, Southern California, uh, San Juan Capistrano. Mm -hmm. And then me and my wife are doing a little relocation. So I'm going to actually be in a different state from all of them now. So it'll all be via Zooms and FaceTimes and stuff. But it's fun just to watch your guys' interactions and, and stuff. And that's really cool that you guys have that kind of unique story where you kind of met where you already have your families and stuff and kind of after your career, at the end of his career, and you've cultivated this relationship. It's fun to watch that. Well, I, I appreciate that. And we've had some good feedback on the chemistry that we have. And I think part of that is what I already said before, like the persistence and the diligence. I mean, we've all talked about the, uh, you know, the pie in the sky, right? Like Joe Rogan with his, you know, millions and millions of followers. Right. And, you know, my wife listens to this guy who's a stoner and an MMA guy. And, you know, he's a little slow and a little this and a little that, but he's an outstanding listener. And, and, and part of it is the guests that he has on. And I think his secret was always being consistent and putting out content. And so sometimes the content can be shitty, not that we're putting to you know, putting out crappy uh, content here on the right. social Noster network, but it's really about being consistent. And Jeff and I, from a baseball perspective, two things to your comment about our chemistry. One is we are trying to be super consistent. Like let's make sure we're doing it weekly. I think I missed one while, while I was on vacation and that was partly due to him because he had a golf day on the day that we normally are gonna to record. I was trying to, you know, do it on vacation, but I think is just we're trying to be consistent. And when we're consistent, we're um, we know we have to be on it, and we're getting better each time. Like, how do we make this more concise, or how how do we prepare? Sometimes we over prepare, and then you have all right. this material, and sometimes we under prepare, and it's like, all right, where's the happy medium? And I think because of the mindset that we had, like to get better every day playing baseball. Right. And having that ingrained in you, as you said, you know, basketball, like you finish every practice, you got to make 10 free throws or 20 free throws or 100 free throws, whatever it is, you can't leave the gym until you make that number. And, right. and some people will walk away halfway through and go, ah, that's all right. But if you're really, you know, committed to your craft and wanting to be good at what you do and put your put your best foot forward, then you're going to stay in the gym until you make your 100 free, 100 free, th right. free throw or whatever that is. And so the, the other thing about our chemistry is, 
you mentioned MMA and boxing are very kind of isolating uh, sports. My uh, college roommate did boxing and he would go out and run 10 miles with his headphones and, you know, come back in and hit the bag. And, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of stuff on your own. I mean, Jeff and I spent the latter part or the, you know, the formative years of our career in a locker room with 20 other dudes. You better learn how to get along with people. Um, you better uh, know how to put your best foot forward and you better be kind of, I don't know, if you're socially awkward, you can hide somewhere, but you got to kind of sure. put on this brave face. And sure. I think that, that that that's part of what Blummer and I have, you know, California guys both played professional baseball, spent 20 years in a locker room. And so we have all these common uh, experiences, but we also know how to get along with people and, and kind of make light of things that maybe aren't as serious. Well, as that's important. Think. And I think people don't understand that. Like I, so I play college basketball and I played yeah. basketball when I was younger. And, you know, right now we're kind of living in this world where everything somebody says is controversial to someone else. And I know the NBA is playing right now. And I've been seeing like, you know, look, I'm, look, I'm a basketball coach, right? Like I'm heavily yeah. steeped in the black community and black lives do matter. Right. At the end of the day, yes. all, I, I we're mean, not arguing with that. Right. right. That's and, not and I believe you. every person's life is intrinsically important, but I recognize right now there's a, there is a, highlighting happening within the black community and so of course i've been watching the nba you know stuff a little bit and seeing all the guys taking a knee and whatnot but one of the things that i thought was the most beautiful thing i'd seen was that you know the guys are all taking a knee except for one player he's standing up and he's also black and you know the fact that they all still loved each other through that and there was no there was no inter turmoil within the team you know he was taking a stance differently than some of the other guys saying look i have family that are military i have family and friends that serve this country i have family and friends who have died for this country in respect i am going to stand for them but i'm going to put my hands on my teammates because i support what they're doing and likewise the two teammates that reached taking a knee on either side of them both were like, hey, we love and respect this guy. And instead of being divided, they both just wrapped their arm around one leg each. And they did that together as a family. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about what sports does for us uh, is sports brings us together if, as athletes, right? Because to your point, you are taking all these different points of views. You're taking all these different walks of life, race, religion, um, background of a different economic statuses and you're all coming together and you're a brotherhood and that was one of the things I missed the most about college sports was that instant community of brothers that you just had two things that you mentioned one is that's exactly how Blummer and I got along really quickly is like it was almost like an instant brotherhood because all the other stuff we didn't have to like have a conversation about we kind of understood each other and he understood me and I understood him so I think that shows on the podcast the other thing that you brought up which is that I saw that. I mean, that's a beautiful moment is in a clubhouse, typically, and Blummer and I had a whole podcast on this uh, on our Bleacher Blums podcast is in a clubhouse, you don't really care about that. And, and I said my formative years, like, you know, being with 25 guys in a locker room, like skin color was not even thought about, you know, I mean, right. not from my perspective at all. It was like, hey, are you helping the team win? Are you working as hard as you can? Like, if I got in somebody's face, or I was upset with somebody, or they were upset with me, it wasn't because I was some tall blonde guy, or I was a short African American guy, or I was this or that. It had, it had the fact to do with whether you were pulling your weight, whether you're busting your ass, whether you're yeah. rowing the boat with everybody else in this common direction. And I think it's amazing how we've seen this fractured society, how everything's gotten politicized in a scenario where, I mean, I, I'm in sales. I talk to people every day, all walks of life, all colors, and we just have great conversations. You know, yeah, that's an interesting thing. Oh yeah, it's a back and forth. So I really think that part of the um, fractured nature of society that we're talking about is still a fringe element. It's just, it's getting a lot more publicity and a lot more um, maybe, right. um, a lot more cameras or light shined on it than sure. it was in the past. Because I think most of the people, um, you know, I actually don't like to talk about skin color and I would assume most people don't or that, you know, cultural background. I just like to talk to people as people. And I find that um, when you do that, um, you know, the other stuff kind of just goes away. hundred percent. Well, and that's the beauty in sports, right? And I think why it's so important that sports gets back because you don't care, right? If you're a Laker fan and you're at the games or a bar or something with everybody else is wearing a yellow jersey, it's about that yellow color, that yellow, oh, gold yeah. and purple, man. And the same for any other sport, right? It's sports brings people together 
and and uni unifies people versus dividing people, right? Unless yeah. we're in the opposing team's colors, then it can be divisive. But uh, there you go. Yeah, you know, it's a. We'll get the soccer hooligans out of the conversation. They hate you because you're from a different city, but you know that that's a whole nother story. No, I, I think you that's just hit crazy. By the way, just really quickly, I had a friend who yeah. played soccer in Europe, and I watched that movie Green Street Hooligans with Elijah Wood back in the day, um, and he said that that was like, like not only was it real. But like he oh, yeah. it before, it's, it gets crazy. It gets crazier than it does here. It's more like a, a consistent Dodgers Giants rivalry where, you know, fans can get beat up or, you know, NFL games are like that. If you're wearing the opposing jersey in their, uh, in their stadium, I mean, those games have gotten rough. And so it's like hooliganism. There's a, um, there's a documentary on Netflix right now. I watched it last year and I can't think of the name about a, um, a soccer team. Um, and they have insight into the, it's uh, something till I die uh Sunderland till I die so if anybody wants to see that that's about that's not about hooliganism but that's about the passion they have for soccer and it's a team that's trying to move back into the Champions League so they're in the um I'm sorry into the Premier League so there's the three tiers yeah. they're in the Champions League and if they win the the Champions League in the top three then they can push up for the Premier League <laughs> and then the uh, Premier League teams get relegated but um that'll give you a little more insight into how passionate some sports fans can be but i think the overall topic that you touched on we're talking about american sports is um we're certainly um unified by watching sports together it's really about the team we're rooting for and not about um, who's wearing the jersey and what color their skin is 100 percent. yeah and it's been uh like i said i really enjoyed that camaraderie from you and jeff you know and watching you guys and and your podcast and that's been really fun and and, you know, I think their thing, too, getting just into talking about podcasting, you know, because this wasn't something I was even considering doing. I, I've been on podcasts for years. I've right. uh, done interviews and stuff. But I never really thought about doing it myself. Kevin's the one that kind of got me to be like, hey, you should do this with me. And mm -hmm. I thought about it for, like, later in life. I have a book I've been working on for a little while. My second book. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll do it once I release that book, you know, and I'll have some stuff to talk about from that. But... Kevin was like, well, why, why would you wait? And having owned other businesses before and, and stuff, and I was like, yeah, you know, like, why not? And then, <laughs> like, we had those conversations, and I was just getting like, yeah, you know, that sounds like a good idea. Like, I, that's fine. I, I'd do it, you know? And we had only gotten to that part of the discussion, and then COVID hit, and, like, all my businesses got shut down, and all of a sudden I had this free time. I was like, well, all right, I guess we'll do it. Like, let's just yeah. – figure this out so it's been you know we're in august now shutdowns happened in march mid-march so we went through all of may or all of april may june july things slowly opened up and got shut back down I mean, we've been like doing this whole thing for almost five full months now and it's it sucks to say that i feel like this is going to be the new norm for a while which is also challenging. So this has been a really cool outlet. And then seeing like, you know, so many people consume content and yep. having stuff out there now, it's really been quite cool, you know, to see, I honestly wasn't, I had no expectations in this whole thing. And to see how it's really kind of taken off. And again, all this engagement I get from other people. Like I had a, a guy that has, my, has the name Steven Basita. I think he spells it with a V though. And he reached out to me on Facebook. And he's like, hey, I saw your podcast. I Googled my name once in a while. And I, and right. So we've been talking. Uh, yeah. You and, should have Steven Besita on your podcast for sure. I should. Steven. He may not be that interesting of a guy. You got to be careful. Sorry, Steven, you are. But. <laughs> but it was, you know, it's really cool to see, you know, that stuff. And, you know, there, the other thing I'll, I'll touch on too real fast is, so going back to like the pro athlete thing, mm -hmm. the one thing that I always find entertaining and you and Blum are perfect examples is like all you guys are just like at the end of the day the athletes are friends with each other and like the 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 stars the star you know 20 50 guys from every sport typically are all friends with each other and they're friends with all the other star athletes in each of the other sports too and people don't really know that and like I train like there's times I'm training like five six seven NFL guys and they literally play for five six seven different NFL teams but they played in high school together. They played in college together or against each other. Um, and they've kind of grown through these ranks and they're all friends, right? So they play against each other, 
but they're still all friends. And that's always kind of funny to see like the community, you know, all the, the, yeah. they have. cause people think they all like hate each other or something. It's like, no, after the games, they go and like, they have dinners together. They party together. Like you're all upset chipping away, you know, the different fans of different teams, but they're all having fun and you're all fighting over the fact like the game's over. They've moved on. They're all hanging out now. And that just somebody just princess. popped in your door. Yeah, the um, little, little princess. Yeah, that, uh, that's, that's actually. Open it. Okay. Oh, there you go. Here we go. We have a special guest on the podcast, folks. Oh yeah, she featured every once in a while. Okay, here now, please shut that door. Okay. Thank you. Um, the, a couple of things that because that bothers some people that the athletes kind of like shake hands after. My dad was a Celtics fan back in the '70s when you know that you know like. Uh, you know, it was the Lakers and the Celtics, but man, they would throw blows. Like, you know, McHale would get clothesline or Rambus got clothesline and they would just throw blows at each other. And then, you know, you had the bad boys in Detroit and those guys didn't have a whole lot of friends. And there's still that theory about like Isaiah Thomas, you know, pissing off Michael Jackson so bad that, um, you know, he wasn't allowed to uh, be on the dream team. So all kinds of things, there's still some tension, but I, I actually agree with you. And I think that it's not that they don't have that they should be hugging and going out to dinner and partying together, but there is a camaraderie. And I think Blummer and I've talked about this on the Bleacher Blums podcast a few times because people will often ask us, like you said, we have that mailbag, we include the fans and they'll say, well, you know, my son's a good athlete. He's in ninth grade. Like, what do we do? And this is kind of what you do, the training and the, um, uh, and the coaching type stuff. And I'm like, look, it really depends on different people. But I remember the area code games for baseball started when I was in high school. And that was like an all-star tournament for area code. So the scouts would recommend guys that would play. And so we would, you know, the 415-408 area code, which is the Bay Area, would play the 714-949 area code. Right. And so these games were great. But that was when I was 17 years old. So guess what? When I'm 22 and I'm in college and I'm playing, you know, I'm at Santa Clara and we come down to Loyola Marymount or Fullerton to play. Guess who I'm playing against? Like guys from the 714 and the 949. Well, I played against them in the area code games in high school. And then I played against them in an all-star tournament. Now I'm playing against them in division one baseball. And then when the cream of the crop goes to professional baseball, now, you know, you're in the minor leagues together and then, you know, hopefully making your way up to the big leagues. All of those years count, right? So you have six or seven years in this, and so that's partly why you see what you just said, which is that fraternity is small, is we've all kind of been through some of the same travails and, you know, trials and tribulations and things like that to get where we got to. And you do have this mutual respect because you've, you know, you're that 0.1% of that college athlete that was able to dodge some right. bullets and stay healthy and, you know, make well, it to I, this, uh, to to this point, next level. To your point too, like you guys all kind of intermix too, because you have like the all-star games, you all see each other, you know, you're at these events where you're all together, you have, you know, with all this stuff now too, with all the marketing and advertising, video games, the action figures, that all these different things, these guys are always seeing each other. So like, we yeah. you go there and like throw blows with each other, you're getting paid millions yeah. of dollars. You're not going to fight. You're going to become friends because you're there all yeah. day. You're hanging out, you're talking. And that was one of the really cool things I enjoyed about seen um the last dance the michael jordan chicago bulls documentary is like after the championship games you know he's talking to larry bird and give him a hug he's hugging you know gary P i was so pissed by the way when the sonics uh, lost and it's oh like, yeah you're from washington yeah yeah but you love know, gary Payton and sean kemp you know shaking hands and hugging him in the butt you know behind closed doors you see the guys all talking and they're all you know dressed up now and they're hugging each other and stuff and it's just like that, but that's but they all play together like you know you have your usa um you know olympic teams where these guys play you know and they're all trying out for saying yeah. some of the same things but but again you're they're at the same awards so just like you're always crossing paths so yeah. what do you do? you're not gonna fight you're you know no. like you're, you're gonna have conversations and you're gonna like build that camaraderie i've heard it put this way and this is the best way i can understand and and it's mainly for actors but athletes are probably in the same boat if you're an actor like some people wanted to be rich and famous, but typically not. I mean, if you're talking about a high-end actor, they wanted to be an actor. That was their whole thing. So they went to like, you know, uh, not film school, but acting school and they had a coach and they did all these auditions. You know how many auditions they've been to before? Ryan Gosling has a really funny story about going on auditions in LA. Um, my brother was a model for a while and did some TV commercials and he would go from audition to audition. There's a really funny story about that. We'll tell that another time. But my point is, is that, 
you've done all the work to get there and you want to be an actor. And now somebody is like lauding you for this, like, oh, you're so famous. Well, the reason actors marry other actors or the reason actors hang out with actors is because they're actors, not right. because they wanted to be rich and famous. And I think athletes kind of fall in the same boat. I mean, oh, the reason, yeah, the reason Mike Trout and Nolan Arenado are friends is because they're both superstar baseball players, but it's because they have, you know, the highest respect for each other. And there aren't that many people in their stratosphere. And it's like, Hey, who else am I going to hang out with that? That guy gets me and I get him. So I think you'll see that a lot. And that was kind of your point. You know, the other thing I'd add to that, that people don't think about, and it goes to like economic stuff a little bit here. And, and so people will ask me like, well, why do you and your wife go to the, you know, this restaurant where it's 10 <laughs> bucks for a beer, you could go down to Sharky's and get two for a dollar. I said, well, you can. And I've done security for years too. Like I've, I'm a man with many hats. Yeah. yeah. I said, you know, like, here's a deal. Yes, you can a hundred percent. You can go get your, you know, I can go get two beers for a buck down at Sharky's or Cabo Cantina's or whatever. I said, it's not about whether I'm paying the $10 for a beer or not. What you're paying for isn't the beer. And you have to understand that like what I'm paying for is peace of mind. See yeah. at Sharky's, there are 15 security guards for a reason there are fights every 10 minutes. And so, yeah, you can pay for that, but you're going with a bunch of people that have dead end jobs and they're looking forward to getting drunk and getting into fights or trying to hook up. Like they don't have anything to live for. There's no consequence <laughs> for them. When you have achieved certain things and you're building your small little world, whatever it is, like I'm a businessman, I'm an entrepreneur, I own multiple businesses. I don't want to go out with my wife and the few nights that I might even get to see her in a month and have to worry about fighting somebody. Yep. I want to go and I want to relax with her. I want to enjoy the environment. I want to listen to some calm, relaxing music. I want to have great service. I want to have a bar that's not packed because it is $10 for a beer. And I want to know that there's only two security guys. There's one at the front checking our IDs and there's one in the very back, making sure nobody tries to sneak in the back. It's simple. And there's never yep. a fight. I don't got to worry about it. You're paying for the environment. You're paying for a level of, like, um, security not, in many well, ways. I'm going to say that mental, uh, stress relief, right? Because yeah. I know that I'm not going to, you know, and, and I tell people this story all the time. Like if I bump into somebody at a bar where I'm paying 10 bucks for a beer, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to turn and be like, Hey man, I'm sorry. You good. And he's going to turn and say, Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Are you good? Yeah. I'm like, I'm good. You're good. We go our ways. Yeah. If somebody spills a drink, then we're both trying to buy each other a drink and then we'll end up yeah. both buying each other. Like he'll buy me around, I'll buy him around and we'll probably end up becoming some sort of acquaintances when the night's over. Now go to the other bars, yeah. bump into somebody, chairs, glass bottles, fists, bodies are flying yeah. everywhere because you bumped into each other. Yeah. It's not worth it. And you're, so you're hanging out in an environment that's way different than mine nowadays. So, but, uh, but I agree with you in the sense that, I mean, I think this goes back to the podcasting thing. Honestly, I could bring it back full circle, which is, I mean, the podcast is great because we can have this interaction. I don't know you very well. You don't know me very well, but we're learning about each other. We have these commonalities. We have these human traits that are important, but you have a difference of opinion or a, di you know, I don't hang out at Sharky's and you hang out at Sharky's or I don't hang out where it's $10 a beer, but you do. And, um, and, and we see, we see exactly what you're saying. We can find some commonality and we can understand where the other person's coming from. And I think ultimately that's what this is about. And that's what, so that's what podcasting is about, but that's also what, um, is going to kind of bring our society back together 100%. is understanding that there are all different types of people that make the world go around. Um, the fighting thing, you know, I've gotten so much better at this when I'm driving my car, not to be so aggro about traffic and about people not paying attention right you're i mean it's not the point man. you're in orange county yeah I share i'm just that saying you. i'm just north yeah. Of yeah yeah i'm just saying people freak out all the time they ride your tail and then they want to flip you off and then they want to do all stuff and i'm like i passed that stage in my life when that's important to me if you right. want to get in front of me and cut me off or you want to beat me off the line or you know weaving in and out of traffic is fine you know i i get upset when people aren't paying attention behind the wheel of a car because it affects me is the way i look at it but I've tried to just worry about myself. And I think if a lot of us did more of that, regardless of whether it's driving or anything else, you mentioned the right. bar thing. Like when somebody bumps into you at the bar, I mean, it, I cannot be more like apologetic and effusively well, no, like, oh my I God, I'm so sorry. Analogy, yeah. Right. I mean, oh, I no, 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 no. Yeah. Just going I back like to the analogy. Like I got the people it. That you're going to hang out with, right? Because yeah. the people I'm going to hang out with, 
right? Or people that are going to the same bar I'm going to, which are, you know, not that I go to bars that are 10 bucks a beer. It's an analogy, right? I mean, I, I, do yeah, I got it. But it's just, you know, because I've accomplished some things. So the people that I meet at this point in my life are other business owners or people that are successful yeah. in their careers are people that are career driven, right? Mm -hmm. And have families or yeah. are just in that more mature phase of their life. Of course. Yep. But, and you're, you're younger than I am, but you're crossing that threshold. And I think that that's each, you know, the only constant in life is change, right? The only constant is change. So right. I think that that's really the main point. And I think that what you said is, is very, the analogy that you use is very appropriate for podcasting in general. Like how did we get into it and what's the point? But I think the more common, um, not even common, the more, uh, the, the more dialogue that gets out there and the more um, congenial dialogue, which is, look, I don't agree with you. You don't agree with me, but I love to have an opinion on it. You know, it's great to hear your opinion. The more we respect that and understand that, you mentioned the the guy putting his hand on the leg and the other guy putting on his shoulder. I mean, the more we have that, the more valuable um, the podcasting realm can be, but also the more connected we'll all be as a as a people. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I fully agree. And I know that we've had a good little time and we'll have to do this again, but I'm in the process of, doing a relocation right now with my wife. So okay. I now have uh, some people coming to pick up things the next few minutes and I got to hop off, but nice. thank you so much. I appreciate being able to do this with you and I'll now have to go back to Jeff and I'll have to start getting the two of you in different, you know, some of the same conversations and we can kind of, and see yeah. who listened to whose conversation on the podcast. You know, let's, com guys. let's compare notes for sure. That's Steven, right. I can't thank you enough. I mean, I love the social Noster network. I like the connectedness we have, but I really appreciate being a guest on your podcast. Am I allowed to ask where you're moving or is that going to be a secret for another podcast? No, you can. So I, you know, I don't know if I told you all this, but I, I had to close two of my three businesses. So my uh -huh. basketball club is still up and running and that'll, that'll be fine. But I have chapters all over the place. So I have a chapter that we tried to launch in Denver and it didn't happen yet because of COVID. So I'm going to Denver where I accepted a business development job, um, consulting for a company out there and doing some project manager stuff. It's a, it's a company that specializes in like custom homes and stuff. Now they're called oh, cool. construction. So I'm going out there with the wife and start a new journey there. And then I'll be able to work on my Denver chapter while I'm out there. So I'll be doing some flying back. I have to come back to Orange County twice a month. Uh, for tournaments and stuff but yeah we're gonna take a little little journey and get out of the craziness of socal for a little while and we decided now it's time to try a different adventure we have you know one girl with one more on the way She's gonna be here quite soon and we just wanna we just wanna have something a little different for a while we've been down here for, i've been here for 15 years my wife's been here for about 10 and you know it is i think the the traffic, the constantly being on top of each other. And then really this pandemic, I think has really changed our point of view on a lot of stuff because awesome. you're, you're literally shoulder to shoulder with people, no matter what, you know, there's so many of us everywhere. We live in Southern California. There's 9 million people in LA. There's almost 5 million in Orange County. There's another 7 million in San Diego. We're all close. Yep. And that's just a lot of people. And you can't really have space. You can't have like peace in you know having some land and, and not having your neighbors literally smack dab next to you i mean where we live we live in a town home um and town homes all around us so we're just with all of our neighbors and it can be great for a season but we wanted to try something else for a while so awesome yeah. well i wish you wish you well on your journey to colorado i'm um we went to bozeman montana last year for a vacation and i have a good friend that lives in billings and you know, aside from the ocean, which we would miss greatly, I'm, yes. I'm looking for some wide open spaces myself. So we'll have to see what the what the future holds. But uh, Blummer got out of Southern California and went to Texas. So he's dealing with humidity and bugs, but it's uh, the cost of living is great. And it looks like he's golfing a lot. So. Yeah, I know that's the pleasant, um, pleasant side is the cost of living is radically different, which is nice. So. Definitely. All right. we'll do. But my man, we'll connect later. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for being on my podcast. Get it. You're with Stephen Basito. We're on the Social Notion Network. And again, my guest, David Turtle, please check out Bleacher Blums. It's another podcast on here. And I promise if you love sports, you love baseball, you will love these guys. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. We're on Facebook and, of course, here on YouTube. And again, thank you so much for joining us today.